Hey guys, just running through some uh, notes for 5.1 to help you understand a little bit of the logic that goes behind each of these um, th these rules that we're going to use for exponents. Um, and, and really, we want to have a grasp of these exponent rules, um, not so much for, for the polynomials that we're going to work with in this chapter, but just generally for you know manipulating, whether that's through multiplication, division, things like that, understanding why things that we, we sort of know happen, why they happen the way they do. Um, and so it's kind of just a, what's really going on in the background. And so there are these different exponent properties. I think, what is there, seven of them? Um, and we're going to go through each of these properties and talk about how it applies uh, to problems that we'll be working with. And then you'll see that there's a note, uh, that there's some homework help down below that you should be able to find um, and get some help with there. So the first thing is we have the property that's called the product of powers. So what that means is if we take something raised to an exponent, times that same thing to a different exponent. An example of that would be like x to the third times x to the fifth. And if we were to multiply those two things, we would get x to the eighth. Now the reason that happens is x to the third really means that there's three x's, and x to the fifth really means that there's five x's. And so if we talk about what does it mean to multiply these three x's by those five x's, it means that we've got eight x's being multiplied out. So that's our first property. The second property, which gets confused with this a lot, with the product of powers, is the power of a power. Which is to say, if we had x to the third raised to the fifth, that would come out as x to the fifteenth. Now there's a couple of ways to remember this. One is the fact that the exponents are separated by a parentheses. That should imply to our brains there's some sort of multiplication to be done. And so 5 times 3 is our 15. But if we really need to draw it out, something to the fifth power means it's been multiplied 5 times. Which means that this is actually x to the third times 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 x to the third. And that's where we can get our x to the 15th. We can see that there's 15 x's being multiplied out. So those are our first two properties that are really, really useful to us. The next one is kind of a combination of the two. If I have something in the parentheses that is multiplied, this is all multiplication and division based. It is not addition and subtraction based. What that means is if you're looking at a problem like x plus y to the third power, the rules we're talking about today do not apply. And you won't see any of that in your homework, but later on as we do other problems and other assignments, I see some kids drifting towards this idea that they could distribute an exponent. You can't distribute an exponent across addition or subtraction, only through multiplication. So the product, or the power of a product um, rule, okay, is that if you have like x squared y to the fourth, and all that is going to be cubed. Well, up here, based on the last uh, rule we just learned, we learned that, hey, that could be distributed or multiplied. Well, it's just going to be multiplied by each of these, producing x to the sixth and y to the twelfth. So you can see that that exponent will distribute. Again, it's only multiplication based. It's not if that was x squared plus y to the fourth, I can't do any of that. I'd have to FOIL it and write it all out in parentheses. So there's our, say, our third rule. The fourth rule is what is the definition of a negative exponent? Now, if you think about, um, yeah, sorry, we'll just, we'll, sorry, negative exponents. So if I have x to the negative 3, imagine that's a 3 with me. That is the same as 1 over x to the positive third. So when we talk about exponents as repeated multiplication, there's some logic that should tell us that negative exponents would be repeated division. In other words, um, as we cross the fraction bar, um, we're able to, to, uh, to do this. Now, a couple things. Obviously, if, if our value here is 0, we really can't put 0 in the denominator of a fraction. Uh, it, it causes a, an undefined value and we have all kinds of problems. That's why you see that a can't be zero. But aside from that, you know, if you had uh, 2 to the negative 3, that's the same as 1 over 2 to the third, and 2 to the third is 8, so that's the same as 1 over 8. 
And if you were to calculate in your calculator 2 to the negative third, you'd get the same thing as 1 over 8. Same decimal equivalence. All right, got just three more. All right, if negative exponents create division, positive exponents create multiplication, what's in the middle of all of that? In other words, negative, so let's go x to the negative, uh, let's pick a number, change my mind. Let's go 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, and 2 to the 2. This would be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. This would be 1 over 2, so 1 quarter, then 1 half. Okay, over here 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. There's got to be a number between 1 half and 2 somewhere that makes sense for this. But this also works with 3. You'd have 1 over 9, 1 over 3, 3, and 9 if we did it with 3. And we still want that middle number. What is that number that's over and over going to show up right there? There are a couple of other ways to prove that this is true. But it turns out that anything to the 0 power is by definition 1. So x to the 0 is by definition 1. Now, another way to show that would simply be 2 to the negative 1 times 2 to the positive 1. Based on our earlier rules, we know that is 2 to the 0. We can add the exponents. Well, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half times 2 to the first is 2. And 1 half times 2 is 1. So it turns out no matter what number I'm using as my base, if I have that exponent of 0, I'm going to end up with a 1 as my value. Just two more rules, and they are rules that should make sense based on what we've already been doing. We have the quotient of powers, meaning that if you have x to the fifth over x to the third, make that a 3, um, one of the ways that we can simplify when we were Multiplying x by x, we added the exponents, so dividing x by x would make sense that we could subtract the exponents. x to the 3 minus 3, well 3 minus 3 becomes 0, and anything to the 0 is a 1. So this would become x to the second over 1, or just x to the second. Conversely, if I had x to the third over x to the seventh, because 3 is my smaller value, I want to remove it by subtraction. And that becomes x to the 0 over x to the 4th. But I know x to the 0 is really a 1. So I would get 1 over x to the 4th. All right. Last rule is just that exponents can be distributed in a fraction just like they can in multiplication. So if you have 3 over x squared and you raise it to the third power, you're going to distribute that exponent to get 3 to the third over x to the sixth. Anytime you have a number with an exponent, always simplify. 3 to the third is 27 over x to the sixth. And that's, that's all of the seven different rules and how they get applied. Look at the homework video as well to see if there's some help that you can get there. And uh, good luck. We'll see you in class.